mentioned the possible hot war between Japan and China, and of course that was the sort of alignment that happened during World War II. And it does look indeed like it's a setting up for that sort of inevitable hot war. Chinese think tank conflict inevitable between Japan, China, over Senkakus. The Chinese Academy of Social Sciences report on the development of the Asia Pacific region points out that China's rapid development is raising anxieties in surrounding nations, forcing them into taking precautions and requiring them to accept the readjustment of the power balance. And again, this is exactly, you had the currency wars preceding World War II, and you also had a rising power of Germany and the U.S., and the declining power was the United Kingdom, and they had to throw their their glory or their empire, I guess, to one of the, the two, and they chose the U.S. rather than Germany. Well, you make an excellent point. Hot war, currency war, hot war, currency war. The U.S. has benefited after World War II from this arrangement mightily, but it looks like in this new global rearrangement of the currencies that the U.S. is holding the weakest hand. So the U.S. dollar will probably be devalued the most, and the yen, and the U.K. pound, against the Chinese currency. And, of course, that's where the war is. It's the China-Japan, or Japan's a proxy for the U.S. And China is, wants to revalue up, but only if it can take a huge piece of America's and Canadian assets as the result of this uh, interaction. And that's what they're angling for. And they're already buying huge pieces now of American. Remember, just a few years ago, the ConocoPhillips deal was rejected. Uh, the China was considered a strategic asset that they would not be allowed to have. Since that deal, China's bought many, many more billions worth of assets than that one single deal. This hasn't been talked about in the U.S. press because why alert the citizen about a hot war?